Hey everybody, thank you for joining. Uh, this is the More We Know We Grow podcast. Today I have a special guest with me, a friend of mine, Shyla Bassey, who is a credit uh, guru. Today she's going to tell us a little bit about that process, what it looks like, even share a credit hack with us. So I'm excited to uh, get this thing started. Let's go ahead and get it started. Let's go. <laughs> Shyla, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Hello, hello. Thank you. All right. I love that energy. Every time we connect, it's uh, positive energy. I love it. I love it. So again, like I was mentioning, Shyla is a credit guru. And so we want to hear from her today. So Shyla, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what, what you have to offer. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Morris, for having me on. Of course, my name is Shyla Bassey. I'm actually based here in Gilbert, Arizona. And uh, truly, just to share a little bit more about me, my background uh, comes from working in corporate America in the banking industry. And uh, back in 2019, I made one of the biggest leaps of faith in my life, which was making a decision to leave corporate America. And that led me to getting licensed as a realtor here in Arizona, but now in a position to help people improve their credit and finances. Uh, because for me, financial literacy and really creating financial acumen has always been a passion of mine. And so now I'm here in the Gilbert, Arizona market, just trying to change one life at a time, right? Helping everyone with the knowledge that many of us were not taught in our formal education. I know I wasn't at least, wasn't taught about credit, wasn't taught not about in school. And so now blessed to be in a position to help so many people that need a solution that didn't know was possible. I like to, to share that there is light at the end of the tunnel and we have a solution for everybody. So I'm excited to be here. Yeah, well, thank you for joining us. And you know, when I pull up, put out those fillers, uh, being that I'm in the real estate business, mm -hmm. uh, it is a lot of people that need some form of credit help, I should say. Yeah. You know, yeah. it could be from something small like inquiries to something huge like defaults and all of that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I always get different questions and I'm always willing to help people, uh, but they're always at different levels. So yeah. what would you say uh, would be like the first steps in that process? Like what should someone do? They have an issue or, or they're trying to get a, a let's just say a house, a car, mm -hmm. get lower insurance uh, and they want to to improve their credit. What would be their first steps uh, with you? Yeah. I always say the first step is getting started, but let's talk about what that really looks like. Because when you get started in partnering with us in our program, the first thing that's going to happen is our team is going to do a full analysis on all three of your credit reports. And it's important that you know that because every single credit bureau not only has a different credit score, but every single bureau has something different reporting on them. And so our team is going to do a full analysis of all three reports to find anything that's there. And sometimes I connect with clients and like, oh, I don't have very much on my credit. And then we go in and do that analysis and we find 10, 15 different yeah. negative accounts. So the first step, when you get started, our team reviews everything. Whether they find three items, whether they find 33 items, no matter what negative account is on your credit report, good news is, is it can be disputed for deletion. So that's where we come in. Because once they do the analysis, then we create specific dispute letters for all three credit bureaus. Mm. Another reason this is important to know because you want to dispute those items from all three. They don't communicate with each other. They are individually owned corporations. Mm. So we help you with creating dispute letters for all three bureaus to help you get those negative accounts removed from every single one of them. And so those truly are the first two steps and the two most important steps for our clients. And we include our clients in the process, Morris. And what I mean by that is we have our clients sign their letters and mail them to the credit bureaus. And the reason we include our clients in the process is for two reasons. Number one, everyone should know what's being sent to the credit bureau. It shouldn't be a secret. 
Right. You should know exactly that it's starting. The process is started. So we include our clients in the process. So they know step by step that something is happening on their credit. But the second reason is because there's a level of responsibility and accountability that we all should have for our credit. So we want our clients to be a part of the process because there's a little more ownership, right? When you know that you played a role in improving your credit, you're going to be more likely to keep a higher credit score. Uh, you'd be surprised how many clients I end up helping that have done credit restoration in the past, but didn't learn the habits and how to maintain that score and end up having to come back. So we want to help change habits to help more people maintain high credit uh, versus going through the roller coaster effect. So that's really a little bit about what you can expect from the process of credit repair. OK, yeah, well, thank you for that. You know, one other question that I, I want to mention that I get is the difference between like the FICO score and your consumer credit karma score. And so, you know, for some of the people that that are excited about their uh, credit karma and then they talked with a lender and the lender like, well, no, it's 20 points lower or something <laughs> like that. What is going on that's making that happen and what should that consumer do? to reassure that they're as close as possible to what a financial institution will see? Yeah, I love this question for a lot of reasons because everyone just loves Credit Karma. <laughs> and I'll tell you, there are some features of Credit Karma I do like, like just it's very easy to read and understand what's happening on your credit. But I'll tell you, there is a, a, a difference, right, in the scoring model that Credit Karma shows versus what you'll see if you go to a lender or a car dealership. And the reason that there's a different score is because everyone that's pulling credit is using a different scoring model. So if you ever wonder like, well, man, why does Credit Sesame say something different than Credit Karma? Or why does Experian app say something different from Credit Karma? All of these websites are using different scoring models, pulling information from different directions. And so truly the most accurate score that you'll find is the true score when a lender pulls it. That's your real score because that's the score that's giving you the ability to get credit, right? Whether it's to buy a car or whether it's to buy a home. And so whenever you get that score from a lender, trust it. That is the, the accuracy of what you can actually use. Um, but I love leveraging a tool called annualcreditreport.com. Although it may not always provide you your score, it's going to provide you every detail pertaining to your credit score. And to truly get some of the most accurate scores, you can go to the credit bureaus directly on their websites and get their specific score for each of your bureaus. But keeping it simple, the reason scores are, are different is because everyone's using a different scoring model on how they're pulling credit information to create their score. Uh, so that's why those okay. uh, there's a variation between the two. OK, yeah, I, I, I never knew that. So good, good information. So I guess another uh, question I think I get a lot is the expectations. So what should someone expect? You told us how to get started. Uh, like you just said, the first thing is, is to get started. Mm -hmm. But then once we get started, what should I expect? Something to turn around like in two weeks or two months <laughs> or six months? You know, like what, what should be a good expectation for me in this process? Yeah, what I'll say, if anyone's promising you an overnight process, run, <laughs> because <Okay. laughs> the reason for that is you want to make sure that you're going through a process that's going to permanently delete items from your credit report, not mm -hmm. temporarily. And so what to expect, expect during that process is that the credit bureaus, they have 30 to 45 days to respond to a round of dispute letters. That's just the given time frame that they have. And so I encourage clients to simply trust the process. Negative remarks typically haven't been hanging out on a credit report for a month, two months, or even six months. So I encourage clients to expect that it can take five to seven months or longer, depending on the type of derogatory mark that is there. But we have some, some really awesome good news stories where we've had clients receive results as early as their first 45 to 90 days in the program. But I really encourage clients to plan for five to seven months for optimal results because we are going through and permanently getting items removed for deletion. You know, we have clients that assume that items have to stay on their credit report for seven to 10 years. That's not true. We can come in and get those items removed within months. Um, but we encourage clients to know, hey, if it's been hanging out there for six years, don't 
expect that it's going to come off in 30 days. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, that, that's very, very helpful. Very helpful. So I know everyone is excited to know about that hat that you're going to give them. Uh, but before I ask you about the hat, can you just help to explain uh, the ranges? Because I get um, a lot of clients, again, in the real estate uh, industry where, you know, uh, they're trying to strive for a certain range and they may go from, I want to go from 650 to 700. But to a lender, that's really still all within the same range. So you're not really going to benefit by trying to get that 50 more points to get a mortgage, you know. Yeah. So can you just break down the ranges so people will know kind of like when they're going to that next range? Yeah, definitely. So the first range, it, it starts at our credit scores really range from 300 to 850. Okay. And so that first a tier at the bottom of the score range ranges from 300 to 579. And this is the core credit score. And then when you go from 580 to 669 is when your score becomes fair. Mm. It's from 670 to 739 where you become good credit or your score becomes a good score. And then it's from 740 to 799 where it's very good. And then of course, 800 to 850 is where it's exceptional or excellent credit. And so those are the ranges for your credit scores. OK, so ladies and gentlemen, don't try <laughs> to kill yourself trying to go from 600 to, to 850. You know, you can still be in that middle range and still qualify for a mortgage, uh, good car notes and everything like that. So mm -hmm. that was good breakdown because I know I get that question a lot. So for a hat, because I promised my guests that we would give them <laughs> something that they can at least try themselves uh, to, to try to bump up their score. So what you got for us today, Shyla? Man, so there's a fun hack we've been having our clients uh, use called the 15 and 3 credit card hack. And what this simply is, is, of course, you're already making your typical credit card payment. Uh, but with the 15 and 3 hack, what it is, is basically 15 days before your due date, paying half of your credit card payment. Mm. And then three days before your due date, paying the second half. Wow. Doing this for a few months, we've had clients see a pretty substantial increase in their credit score. And I always get the question, though, so what is it? Am I making an extra payment? What's mm -hmm. the difference? And it, whatever reason, I'll tell you, it's hacking the system to make it look as though you are making extra payments. So it's affecting your payment history. Mm -hmm. But I just encourage people just use it for a few months and watch how it can impact your credit. And it's even beyond credit cards. You can also do this on um, car loans as well. Just whatever your current monthly payment is, split it in half. 15 days before the due date, pay half. Three days before the due date, pay the second half. So just try that with your credit products and just see what impact it has on your credit score. Uh, but we've been leveraging this a ton on, on social media and TikTok. And we've had clients trying it and they're like, oh, my gosh, I did it <laughs> and it worked. So uh, the okay. 15 to 3 credit card hack is a fun one. Yeah, well, ladies and gentlemen, if you all try it, just let us know. Go go to the remarks and let us know, you know, if it improved it. And, and if so, by how many points? That'll be interesting to know. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you again, Shyla. And how would someone reach you if they have credit, qu uh, credit questions or they wanted to get the process started? Like what would be the best way to contact you? Yeah, so there's a few ways to reach me. Number one, you can reach me by phone. Uh, my cell phone is 520-909-7902. You can call, you can text. I recommend sending me a text first just in case if I am on a call, but I would definitely get back with you. Uh, you also can reach me on social media. Um, you can reach me on Instagram at Bassy Solutions or even on Facebook uh, by my full name, Shyla Bassey. And so uh, just a few ways that you can definitely reach me uh, so that we can help you. All right. Well, thank you again. I'm sure my guests uh, will love this podcast because a lot of people, like I mentioned before, have something that, you know, that they can uh, do to improve their score, their current score. So this is going to be a val valuable podcast. I know they'll get a lot out of it. And I just want to thank you again. Every time you come on, it's just a, a breath of fresh air. So thank you again, Shyla, for everything. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Excited to just help more people and position them for freedom, especially all financial right. freedom. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you all for joining this uh, week's podcast.